So I was reading your bios and they talk a lot about your perspective on failure. And I thought that was really interesting because I'm insanely scared of failing, even though I don't necessarily let on, um, especially as a woman who's trying to go into the music industry and music business. So do you have any advice on how we can overcome fear and like keep going and not let it hold us back? Yeah, well, I think failure is a really good thing, especially when you're young, mainly because you learn how to practice on stuff that doesn't really matter for the later failures that are going to be really big in your life later, which we're we're all going to have failures in, in one way or another. It could be work, it could be family, it could be you know, anything. And failure is, is an incredible tool because it helps you, you know, see what you did wrong and then change your strategy or change what you did, what you did, and then try again. It's, it's a learning tool. May obstacles arise as allies. It's kind of, it's part of a Buddhist prayer that I really like. And it basically means may things that don't go your way become your friends. Like, can you learn something from this hardship? Can you learn something from what didn't go right? And then turn it into something that's much better. And I think I've been very good at failing. As young women, how do we gain, you know, professional respect that we may deserve, but might not have when faced with microaggressions rather than outright sexism or for some of us, racism or whatever it may be? Yeah, I mean, it's really, it's really tough. Um, I have a couple things. One is I just say hard work is a habit. So it doesn't even matter what it is that you're doing. Just do it really well and just own your story. Just say, I am a smart woman and I can do this and I'm going to work hard at every test and doesn't matter if I think it's important or not important and I'm going to do it. And it's, it's really a mind over matter thing because discrimination does exist. Um, we have seen that it's proven. I think it's 70 cents of every dollar goes to a white woman and it's less than maybe it's around 60 cents. I don't know the exact number goes to a woman of color. So it's totally not fair. But if you go into every job interview and every situation and you think this deck is so stacked against me, it's totally not fair. I'm not going to get it. Then you won't get it. We have to stop waiting for the world to be fair because nobody is coming to save us. Like nobody, nobody is coming to save us. And we have to be the change that we want to see in the world. And if we continue to wait for the world to be fair, you're just going to be waiting a long time waiting a long, long time. So what is one piece of advice that you would give to your 18 year old self? I mean, as myself, a young woman entering a field of STEM, which also lacks um, gender diversity, do you have any advice? I would probably tell myself not to worry so much. I mean, I was so worried and you don't always get what you want. And that is for sure. Um, And all personal, as well as professional, as well as school, but it always works out. Right. And I wish I just had kind of told myself to relax a little bit, (laughs) just a little. I mean, I think you don't want to be too relaxed and have too much balance because there's a lot of competition and there's a lot of people that want to take your spot. So you want to make sure that you get that spot, but, but don't, don't get all wound up about it. And I really, at times would get really worried about things and it all worked out. Even if it didn't work out, it all worked out. So in one of the articles you were discussing the shift from like becoming sort of a feminist overnight um, and sort of what that was, um, cause you said you described having breast cancer and then adopting. And could you t- t- discuss a little bit more about that shift and sort of what you've learned about feminism and what that means? Yeah, well, it was funny because um, one of my fellow alpha girls, she calls it the third sex where, you know, in a venture capital firm, you have your male partners and then they have their wives who are women. And then they have their one woman partner who's the third sex, right? And so I think I was trying to pretend that I wasn't a woman. Like I didn't go to, look, there's a great conference called Fortune Most Powerful Women, which I now go to, which I love. And, um, but I didn't go to the Fortune conference. I didn't network with other women. I was just kind of one of the guys and I just would hate for them to actually find out that I was actually a woman. It, It turns out they knew already. But then, you know, having some, uniquely women experiences like having breast cancer and having a baby um you realize that you are a woman and there were so many things in my life that were so amazing it's like I pretty much had everything you kind of would want if you were going through those types of experiences and 
it still was really hard for me. I mean, it was really, really hard. And I was like, oh my God, if it is this hard for me as a woman with this experience, it's got to be hard for every other woman in this world. And I'm a big believer that if you have a platform, if you have a voice, if you have resources, you need to use all of those things to help others, right? I'm trying to like kind of learn how to develop and trust my own judgment. So what do you typically look for in the companies and people that you invest in? I look for market size it's really important to have a market because no company can ever be successful if they don't have a market. And then secondly, I look at the people that are involved. I just was with a very famous venture capitalist. who's 94 years old, Bill Draper this past week. And he's all about people. Bill's like, it's all about people, people, people. And I agree with him, but it's all about market for me. And you can fix people, you can fix product, you can fix everything else except market. So that's what I look for. So I'm really interested in going into women's health and becoming an OBGYN, which kind of unfortunately is a very male dominated field. Um, So I was kind of wondering what your advice would be to young women who are interested specifically in going into those. First of all, you have a much better market advantage because women don't want to go to a man. They want to go to a woman. Like you could, that's like, it's, it's a huge competitive advantage that you'll have. I also think very few dollars are spent on women's health and women's research and, and, and women's health issues. So I think, I think we need more women's doctors and you will see things that the male doctors won't see in terms of problems or things that could be solved or solutions that will be easier. And it's interesting because I think you have a huge competitive advantage um, and, and being a woman and focusing on a woman's field that has been neglected. All of you should, should be commended because this time of COVID has been very hard and you probably missed school for at least what, a year and a half. Is that right? I would be interested in just hearing if you've thought about it. And if you haven't thought about it, no need to answer what you, what you're going to take away that's good from this COVID experience and what you're going to leave behind. One of the best things that I'll probably take away from that time in quarantine and virtual school is time management. The virtual school year for me was just a lot of the same thing all year. And so there wasn't that much variety. So if I burned myself out, I couldn't sustain any of the things I was doing and there was nothing to fall back on. So that was, those are definitely some big takeaways that I still use now and hope to use in college too. I definitely through COVID learned to just slow down and like prioritize my own mental health. And obviously you can't do that with everything, but I just learned a lot of skills of how to cope with this type of huge thing. And I think it's gonna help me a lot in the future. The pandemic had a lot of obviously terrible things that happened, but it gave us a lot of time to like explore what, with all this extra time, it's time to explore what we loved. And so I think, I think a lot of girls here can resonate, right? That we got to like find things that we were really passionate about. I feel like before COVID, I was always so busy running around, struggling to have a balance in my life. I would wake up at like 5 a.m. and go to swim practice. And then I would be at school for eight hours. And then I'd be working in a lab and it was just repeat, repeat, repeat. And then COVID hit. And I feel like, like you said, I really learned how to create this balance in my life just because things slow down for a while. And that's definitely something that I've you know, been able to continue as we're seeing sort of the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. So one of the kind of just like weird offshoots of COVID that my school did is we didn't have um, school on Fridays. We didn't have synchronous learning on Fridays. So I ended up being able to drive meals on wheels on Fridays, which I never would have been able to do during the normal non-COVID time. With the pandemic, I had this space to do what I was really interested in and kind of follow my own passions and interests and and trust like my own judgment. So I think that that's been something that's been really helpful, figuring out how to trust myself and follow my own interests above. That's a really good point. And one of the, back to the 18 year old question, just own your own story, right? You know, I think all of you are so impressive and I'm so pleased to, to know all of you. And I'm really kind of counting on you. I mean, we have had a male dominated world for so long, um, where, you know, our presidents, our Congress, you know, our CEOs, um, our doctors, you know, 
there's so many fields that are just so male dominated and look where we are, right? I don't think we're better than when I was your age. I think we're worse. I think the environment's worse. I think there's so much unrest in our country. There's so much di diversion and division. So I think it's really up to you guys to solve this. And so we have to use our voices and we have to protect each other and protect our children and protect our parents and not let this stuff happen. I'm really counting on you guys, all of you. Sonia, thank you so much. That's a great note to end on. I think we all are counting on and believing in the many talents of these great women on this call and including yourself who sets a fine standard for, for all of us. So we really appreciate the time from all of you. Thank you for being here.